the word sustaining, imaging, becoming flesh. Jesus is the radiance of God's glory. Here it is, Hebrews 1, verse 3. Christ is the radiant light of God's glory and the perfect copy of God's nature, sustaining the universe by God's powerful command. Christ. It's important to remember that Christ is not Jesus's last name. The word Christ is a title. It means the anointed one. So we have Christ is the Greek word. Messiah is the Hebrew word, but it means it, it's not a surname. And but it's so consistently applied to Jesus that many people think of it like a surname. But if you look at the scripture, if you look at the tradition of the church, and if you look at experience, if you, it reveals a bigger picture. And that's the picture that we want to start to paint today when we're thinking about the word and incarnation and creation, that Christ enables us to see this, to see creation in a different way. Now, this passage in Hebrews says that Christ sustains the universe. The concept of Christ can be used to describe reality in an archetypal, symbolic, profound way. But it names the shape of the universe before it names the individual who typifies that shape, the one that we call Jesus Christ. All of creation first holds God's anointing, God's the beloved status and then jesus brings the message home in a personal way 13 billion years later to get the idea this is how god operates okay and this is who god looks like so the word sustains images becomes flesh Christ is the radiant light of God's glory, the perfect copy of God's nature, sustaining the universe by God's powerful command. It's like looking at a, a, a pyramid from the baseline down to the point where the word is made flesh and dwells among us. Now, this is a different way of thinking for so many Christians. The three synoptic gospels are largely talking about Jesus, the historical figure who healed and taught and lived in human history. John's gospel, as we've seen in the last session, presents a transhistorical Christ, which is why so few of the stories in John's gospel coincide with Matthew, Mark and Luke. Think particularly of those I am statements. I've got the lists here, but look, have, a, have a look through and you'll know them very well. I am the door, I'm the shepherd, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. They're very, very different kinds of statement. And of course, they mirror, they echo the unspeakable name of the Holy One. Who are you? Who, are, who shall I say sent me? Say I am sent you. Who is I am? I am that I am, which can also in Hebrew be translated, I am who I will be, or I am who I was. It speaks of the eternity of God. But there's something much, much deeper here, which is worth just pausing and reflecting on for a moment, that the name, the, the unspoken name of God that we so glibly say, Yahweh, Yahweh, is according to a Hebrew Hebrew rabbi, is that, that the two, they use the two letters of the Hebrew alphabet that you can say without closing your lips. And they mirror the giving out and the taking in of breath. Yeah. Yahweh. God is as near to us as breathing. Who shall I say sent me? He is the very air I breathe. Oh, it makes you, it catches you, doesn't it? Isn't that an amazing concept? God is the very, the, from life's first cry to final breath. God in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Now, all of this is in the theology of John's gospel. It's really powerfully profound, isn't it? 
in the beginning was the word, the powerful, sustaining word of Yahweh. Now, most people don't realize that the apostle Paul never met the historical Jesus. He had a, a vision on the Damascus road. He never met the historical Jesus and he hardly ever quotes Jesus directly. In all, most all of Paul's preaching and writing, he, prefer, he refers to the eternal Christ mystery or the risen Christ rather than Jesus of Nazareth before his death and resurrection. The risen Christ is the only Jesus that Paul ever knew. This makes Paul really helpful, really important for us and for the rest of us, since the omnipotent risen Christ is the only Jesus we will ever know as well. See 2 Corinthians 5, 16, 17, him, all things made new, uh, a new creation. We are new creation in him. I live, but I, not me, but Christ lives within. You know, he comes into different categories. Okay. Jesus's historical transformation, resurrected flesh, allows us to more easily experience the presence, which has been available since the beginning of time, a presence unlimited by space or time the promise and the guarantee of our own transformation and look at the long dissertation on this in 1 corinthians 15 if christ is not risen then we're of all all humans most miserable most miserable but christ is risen in jesus the timeless christ becomes time bound so that we can enjoy enjoy the divine gaze and we'll look at one john if we have time one john one and two is in that which we have handled of the word of life wherever the material and the spiritual coincide there is the christ jesus fully accepted that human divine identity and he walked it into history Henceforth, the Christ comes again whenever we're able to see the spiritual and the material coexisting in any moment, in any event, in any person. All matter reveals spirit and spirit needs matter to show itself. Christ is there whenever and wherever we allow this to be utterly true for us. This is how God continually breaks into history, even before the first Homo sapiens stood in awe and wonder, gazing at the stars. Christ sustaining the universe. The powerful word of God speaking as, as connected to God as a word is to the one who speaks it. Ah. In the next session, we're going to reflect on the word becoming flesh or visible, encounterable. Let me just finish by reading the message version of John 1, 1 to 14. Okay. The word was first, the word present to God, God present to the word. The word was God in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through him. Nothing, not one thing came into being without him. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. There once was a man, his name John, sent by God to point out the way to the life light. He came to show everyone where to look, who to believe in. John was not himself the light. He was there to show the way to the light. The life light was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings into light. He was in the world. The world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people. And they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, whoever believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. And the word 
became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Glory to God.